none of us have ever seen Professor Xavier like this in any of the other films. You and Logan are older, you're weaker, you curse like a sailor in the film. It must have been great to get a hold of that script and see how, how different the character was here. I remember vividly turning the first few pages because I think Charles shows up around about page six or seven. And first of all, reading the description of the location where I was. I'm thinking, what? I'm in this tank somewhere south of the Mexican border in the semi-desert? Uh, what the heck is going on? And then to read that opening scene, which I think gave me so much pleasure. I mean, there were so many nice things to do in this movie, but that long opening dialogue with, with Hugh um, had so much going on in it. <clears throat> um, you know, it's, a, it's an actor's uh, birthday party. <laughs> you, you two argue like Grumpy Old Men if Grumpy Old Men was a movie about a father and a son on a really, really miserable road trip. So I was trying to picture what that road trip between you two was to get to Mexico. The bickering about everything, like who got to control the songs that were played on the radio on that imaginary road trip? <laughs> uh, our taste in music is very different. And, uh, you know, Logan is into heavy metal, and, uh, uh, and that was never, ever Charles' delight. Charles is into Tony Bennett and uh, Sarah Vaughan, maybe, uh, but it, it was just hopeless. And then, of course, we get uh, X-23, uh, Laura, in the scene, um, who actually hasn't even heard of the Beatles or the Rolling Stones. <laughs> so it, it, she provided a kind of mediating role in that. Really quickly, was it nice to be in a standalone film that didn't have to worry about being tied into this whole massive X universe? Uh, yes, in, in a sense it was. It's, it's like we've stepped out of that world almost completely. I mean, we make little reference. In fact, I think at one point Logan says, uh, that's all gone, or, or something like, there are no more. It's only, we're the only ones left. And uh, uh, whenever I hear that line now, it, it gives me a creepy sensation that we really are in another, not another timeline or another existence. It's just that the world has moved on and we have been left behind um, to try and make it a better place. But what a struggle.